We're going to go through some early ice do's and don'ts, things to make you feel a little bit more safe when you walk on the ice. Three things you have to remember when you go on the ice early in the season. Number one, understand where you're going and what the ice is doing. And that comes down to understanding how ice is formed proper equipment and that can be a spud bar, your spikes, etc. stuff like that. And the third point is though, don't trust what other people tell you about the ice. You want to make sure that you know what the ice is doing yourself. We're in early December right now. We're still having a lot of ice forming on the lakes and rivers. Ice always forms from the shore inward towards the center, whether it's a river or a stream or the lakes. Everybody thinks total ice is what counts, but it's actually how strong the ice is is what's important. Clear ice, which you can almost see through, that you can see it's kind of stratified. You've got a portion here which is clear ice. That's what you should actually be measuring. This top part, this is called snow ice. Melt is snow that combined and it's got voids in it, so it's not nearly as strong. It only has about a quarter to a half the strength of the clear ice. You want about four inches to be walking on the ice. And it should be clear ice. Once we get up to five inches, then we can start going with the quads and the snowmobiles. Eight to 12 inches, we're going with smaller vehicles, side-by-sides, that type of thing. 14, 15 inches for trucks. Bigger ones, I'd like to go even 16 or 18 inches because some of the three-quarter tons are getting pretty heavy. Ice can only support so much. You have to assess the ice correctly. Well, if you're gonna go out on the ice in the early season, one of the things you need is a good spud bar. And you can't just have just a fishing net or uh, a wooden pole. You need something with a little bit of weight, some pretty heavy, heavy weight to it, with a good chisel point so you can actually bust through. And not little taps, strikes. Don't hit it right here. If you, if you break the ice, you're just gonna drop right through. So you gotta be ahead of yourself. In the direction of your travel, still got no water, so this is all safe ice. From the tip to the end of the serrated edge, it's two inches. If you hit this and it starts coming up with water, then you know you've got less than two inches of ice. So then you're going to have to start thinking about backing out pretty fast. Snow on a frozen lake makes the ice surface stronger. That's false. Cover on the lake is like an insulating blanket. It prevents or slows down the ice making process. So when we get early ice, that's only two or three inches. The worst thing we can get is a lot of snow on top of it. Weather has been cold. The ice must be solid and safe. No. It helps, it makes more ice, but if it's weak ice, it's weak ice. Ice, like any other solid, shrinks when it gets cold and expands when it gets warmer. So actually when we get a real cold snap, like 30 below, the pressure ridges can actually open. There's lots of times guys that hit slush when it's 30 below. Open water at night looks the same as black ice. You can hit open water and not even realize that you're, you're gonna go into open water because it looks just like glare ice. So snowmobiles especially, especially in early season, they have to be very careful when they go on, on the lakes and rivers. You can't check the thickness of the ice from the seat of a snowmobile. The condition of the ice can't be expressed strongly enough. You want strong, clear ice. You want to be able to assess it properly. So if you do fall through, there's going to be the initial shock. When you first go in, it's going to take your breath away and you, you're, going to, you're going to hit a bit of a panic. Don't worry about kicking off your boots or losing your pants because you think they're going to be waterlogged and it's going to drag you under. They actually trap air, so they actually help you float. What you should be concentrating on is trying to pull yourself out in the direction that you came in, not the, the way you were going because that might be thinner. Go back the way you came. There is something different when you get into that water and you realize you're actually in the water. Even that little bit of splash and get into your face makes a really big difference. You get to that point where your body almost wants to, instinctively wants to, to kind of clam up. It wants to like take a deep breath, but you always gotta to remember to stay calm. The best thing you can have on you are the ice picks. They're gonna help you to be able to pull yourself out. If it was glare ice or, or clear ice, it would almost been impossible. So make sure you have the right gear because without this, I really don't know if I would have been able to make it out. All of these things that we've talked about is to help you to be prepared and to be safe. Yeah. You don't want to put your life in the hands of just an internet comment. If you're gonna go out there, make sure you're safe. There's places to find out information on how to be safe on the ice, the, the Life Saving Society, your local fire department, whether you live in the city or in the country. Lake Winnipeg Report, he understands it. 
He gets it. He doesn't want to see anybody get hurt. Neither do we. Be, Be safe, safe on, on the, the ice. ice.